but I'll tell the world wherever I go. A Savior and He's sweet. I know, yes, He's sweet. I know, yes, He's sweet. I know.
Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see you. We're going to have a scripture reading by Reverend Brother Samuel Giles. Afterwards, prayer by Reverend Brother Herman Whitaker. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. The scripture is found mainly in three places, short verses. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 3, 15. The Gospel according to John 3, 16. Ephesians 4, 7, 8, 11 through 13. Praise the Lord. Ready? Read. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. <clears throat> Four. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ephesians 4, 7, 8, 11 through 13. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. The word of God for the people of God. We thank God for the pastor. Gave some pastor. All the gifts is in a pastor. So we come this morning in the name of Jesus to celebrate the God in Pastor Bay. 27 years of reigning in the ministry at this portion of Zion. And his wife, Sister Karen Bay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's all through your love and your grace and your mercy that we come before your presence one more time to say thank you. Not nothing we've done so great on our own, but all through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, shed it out on Calvary. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the church. We ask in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you look down upon this congregation this morning to bless every person here according to their needs in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray 
for the ones that don't know how to pray for themselves. We pray for the world. We pray for the Christians that's being persecuted for us, for your word, God. We pray for your missionaries out in your field. We pray for the President of the United States of America. We pray for the leaders of all your nations in the world, all dictators. We pray for peace. We pray for peace in our neighborhoods, oh God. We pray for peace in Baltimore, Maryland. We pray for the police department all over the nations. We pray for our young black men. We pray, oh God, for all the mothers. We pray for the one that went out there to Screeks in Baltimore and found a son and brought him home. But, oh God, in the name of Jesus, bless the sick and afflicted list here at the Union Baptist Temple. All hospitals, nursing homes, institutions bound in the name of Jesus. We ask in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you look down upon this morning a special blessing upon our pastor, Ezekiel Grand Bay, and the first lady, Sister Karen Bay, that you would give them a fresh anointing, O oh God, that you would give them a double portion, O oh God, of your love and your peace, and your joy, and your perseverance, and your strength to keep leading this church, oh God, into the 21st century. Oh God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless them, oh God. That you continue to bless Pastor Bay's man. That let the man be in him was also in Christ Jesus. That you keep him fresh, you keep him sharp, in your word, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And O oh God, we come before your presence this morning to say, mercy suits our case. And we thank you, God, for having mercy upon us this morning. We thank you for the church here. We thank you for a healthy church. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we could just keep getting along together and love one another as you have loved us. So we come before your presence this morning just to say thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. We do pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. I will come.
can't help but to praise his name. I can't help but to praise his name. He's been good, so good. He's been good, so good. I can't help but to love the Lord. I can't help but to love the Lord. I can't help but to lift him up. I can't help but to lift him up. He's been good. So good, so good. really been good, good to me. He's been good, been good. So, good. so good, so good, really been good to me. I can't help but to praise his name, really good to me. I can't help but to praise his name, really good to me. I can't help but to bless his name. I can't help but to bless his name. Been good, so good. Been good, so good. I can't help but to love the Lord. I can't help but to love the Lord. He's been good, so good. He's been good, so good. I can't help but to thank the Lord. I can't help but. Thank the Lord. So good, real good. He's really been good. He's been good. So good. Really been good. So good. So good. Time for the benevolent offering. Everybody bow their head for prayer, please. Oh, gracious and precious Father, we come here today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another week's journey. And a special thanks to our pastor and his wife, Lord, but we can give him some honor for doing your will and your work, Lord. We just thank him. But we come in now, Lord, as you open up our hearts, as well as our pockets to give to those on the outside of these gates. But not only for nourishment and food, Lord God, also to help in homes and different things that's going on in our community. So we just ask you, Lord, to bless us spiritual health and financial so we'd be able to do your work and your will. We thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Happy anniversary, Reverend Bay and Thank Mrs. You. Bay. God bless you, and I love you. These are your announcements for the week. Union Baptist Temple Church, honoring our local mothers. That day is Saturday, May 9th, breakfast at 8.30. Program starts at 10. The speaker is Reverend Jody Barrows of Second Baptist, and there will be a free will offering. Live a life worthy of the Lord. This is um, hosted by the annual Mother's Day Breakfast Committee. Um, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior. Congratulations to all the Union Baptist Temple 2015 graduate, graduating high school seniors. There is an official registration from, uh, form located in the church's uh, main office. Please remember to complete the registration form information requested on the scholarship form. In addition, you must complete the required application to receive consideration for the winner scholarship. Copies are available in the church clerk's office or main in the ch in the church clerk or main <coughs> office. The breakfast will be held on first Sunday in June. That date is June 7, 2015. All applications must be returned by April 30th with all the necessary attachments. Many thanks in advance for your cooperation. To God be the glory. Congratulations to Daquan A. Edmonds, the grandson of the late Deacon Jesse Edmonds and Deaconess Lenora Edmonds, who will graduate from the North Carolina State University on May 9th of this year with a degree in sports management. The Union Baptist Temple Church family is cordially invited to celebrate this joyous occasion with the Edmonds family at their home in Egg Harbor City at 4 p.m. on Saturday, May 23rd, 2015. Please see Deaconess Lenora Edmonds if you plan to attend. Uh, please pay attention to your um, bulletins, call the sick, pray for the sick, and on the sick list, I would like you for to add Sister Marva Speller, who has had surgery. She's coming along, but she's still in a lot of pain. Any other announcements will be given from an official of the church or the pastoral board. Thank you, and God bless. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Would uh, all our visitors please stand, give your name and your church affiliation. Amen. On behalf of Reverend Bay, Mrs. Bay, church affiliation, uh, church community. We'd like to thank you for coming and visiting with us. Uh, when you're in our area, please come again. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Any birthdays, anniversaries since last Sunday? Birthdays, anniversaries? Amen. Let the church say amen. I praise the Lord. I'm extra, extra glad to be here this morning, to be with you and to be in the house of the Lord and celebrating 27 years of ministry. Amen. Uh, there's a song that um, is well known in the church, but I have never sung it because it, there were always better voices who could sing it. I felt, you know, uh, even to attempt it. So I'm not even sure of all the words, but uh, I know there's enough of you out there and behind me uh, who, 
who can uh, help me on my journey. And so um, what I want to do is um, just to get us on uh, in voice and on tr in, in harmony is to start with the chorus. We'll sing the chorus and then we'll do two verses uh, of the song and then the chorus and we're on our way, all right? I'm old. No, I'm, no, no, that's not it. <laughs> One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Show me God, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow will never be mine. So for my sake, help me to take one day at a time. I'm only human. I'm just a man Help me to be All I can be And all that I am Show me the stairway I've got to climb so for my sake, help me to take one day at a time. No, no, no. no. Do you remember, okay. sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Should me to to do every day what I have to do. Oh, yesterday's gone. And tomorrow will never be mine. So for my sake, help me to make one day at a time. Here we go. Do you remember when you walked among men? They're pushing and shoving. Mm -hmm, crowding my mind Lord for my sake help me to take one day at a time one day at a time that's all I'm asking of you Give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow will never be mine. So for my sake, help me to take one day at a time mm, Do you remember When you walked among men Well Jesus you know If you're looking below It's worth now than then They're pushing and shoving Oh, 
crowded my mind. Oh, Lord, for my sake, help me to take one day at a time. Mm, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Lord, give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow will never be mine. So for my sake, help me to take one day at a time. Oh yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. to God, giving honor to Pastor Bay, Sister Karen Bay, officers and members of Union Baptist Temple. Congratulations on the 27th anniversary. 1989, that's about the first anniversary. Yeah, fine things. Praise the Lord. Running around inside of here, a lot of sermons from Pastor Bay. As we uh, look at what I believe uh, is going to be appropriate, or else I wouldn't be standing up here with it in my thoughts, praise the Lord, is uh, God's gifts. Now, in general, I just like to say that the greatest gifts outside of God's gift is the people that we receive each and every day and the people that we've that been attached to us to bless us all the time. As a matter of fact, the only real blessing, all the other things are stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can carry every person that you've ever encountered. You can carry them with you. Can't carry all that stuff. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 3.15. And. I was going to... Uh, start off with, I will give you pastors according to mine heart. But the word, it starts here with and. So, and changed the whole sermon when God pointed that out to me. Because I wasn't going to go into the dilemma that is portrayed in this scripture for this verse to be here. But it's a common dilemma. We all have it. Proverbs 20, 24 says, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? All right. Now, because of the condition that the people were in, God acknowledged that if you do this and I will give you pastors according to mine heart. That's Old Testament, remember that. 
okay, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Okay, so that's a qualification that pastors get that come directly from God. And the other preachers who come in front of you in the congregation you're in are not your pastors. They're just delivering some additional things that the pastor will have to clear up in time. <laughs> but we thank God that uh, he doesn't heap all the work on one person because Moses had help also. So that conjunction and connects us to something. The next word in here we have to take a look at, we're not going to be long, is according. Now when I first saw according, I, I was actually doing what I had heard preached before. I would give you pastors, you know, after my heart. Well, according is a little bit different. It says conformity, agreement, harmony, sounds like similar in form and character. Your pastor is an extension of God. Our pastor is an extension of God. In his heart, you will find love, kindness, mercy, trustworthiness, faithfulness, trustful, uh, faithful, I'm sorry, truthful, wise, understanding, righteous, patience, compassion, politeness, and justice. They're all in there. And one thing I can say as I was going through the list, this, this ain't complete, but Pastor Bay hasn't violated any of this. And I thank God for that. So when we look at this, we're saying that and puts us in a position where we understand that we cannot produce what we need. So God has to give us gifts to make up the gaps. So in John 3.16, said God for, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that's not an exact quote, but the thing that God showed me about this, Jesus is love. God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? He gave his love. Who is his love? It's Jesus. So when we come to realize that it is the personification of God's love is where his son comes from. He hadn't loved us, you don't get the son. And without the son, you don't get salvation. Now, the other thing that we have to do is to bring this all around to where we are and what we should receive and so forth. So we, if we have respect for God, we have respect for God's gift. But if you don't have respect for God's gift, you can't trick him and say you have respect for him. See, because he didn't give a superfluous gift. He gave an absolutely necessary gift. The pastor is absolutely necessary. So we go that every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of light in whom there is no verilness nor a shadow of turning. See, God says what? Praise the Lord. What, what came out almost was, uh, I'm Chevy Chase and you're not. Um, but that's what God is saying. I'm God, and you're not. I am the Lord your God, and I change not. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves, okay, Lord, what part of the Bible, you know, he asks us, what part of the Bible do I have to change to make you comfortable? Well, <laughs> he's not going to change any of it. We're the ones who need the changing. And the pastors are given to feed us with knowledge and understanding. Yes, sir. And there's a little bit of difference in there that sometimes we think that just because 
uh, words and information comes out that it's actually knowledge. But no, they may be a group of facts, but that doesn't have to be knowledge. Knowledge comes from God, from the understanding of what to do with the facts. See, lots of information is given. For instance, we all looked at what happened in Baltimore during the week. You know, some people think that the people out there demonstrating was disturbing the peace. No. Peace had been destroyed by the injustice that had been done. And the demonstrations called attention to the fact that peace had been destroyed. See, because the injustice destroys peace. You can't have those two things occupy. You can't have justice and injustice and peace. They don't work. It's kind of like happiness. If you're not at peace, happiness won't even come visit. No, no. That's why Jesus said on his way out, he said, what? My peace I leave with you. See, when we, when we learn to respect every gift that God gave, if he gave us peace, we need to respect that. So when the pastor is teaching and preaching, he's giving out life-saving information. Yes. And if I don't value it in that way, I think he's talking about the guy next to me. No sermon preached, no verse in this Bible is for somebody else. God invented one-on-one, -on -one, not the NBA. See, one-on-one, -on -one, that, that's it. See, when I, when I open this Bible, God is standing there saying, I want to help you. Help me help you on your journey, help you on your way. See, see, that's it. That's the way it goes. So when we come to understand that our respect makes a big difference and whether or not we learn to love. Because loving is not something you do because everything is sweet. Love doesn't even start until it's a mess. That's when love starts. Because if you can't deal with the mess, you can't love. You need to be honest. See, honesty is a thing that serves you forever. It's like truth. Truth serves forever. Truth doesn't serve you in this situation and in the next situation it doesn't work. Those are facts. Facts will work in a situation and won't work in the next situation. Truth works in every situation. And God's saying that my word is truth. He even tells us that when you come to talk to me, put me in remembrance of my word. I can't put him in remembrance of what I don't pay any attention to. So the responsibility is God gives us pastors according to his heart and we are supposed to do what? Accept that pastor as if God was standing in front of us. Because when we just simply think that we have the ability to uh, judge well, yeah, I'm going to say that too. Because um, what happens is the, the, the so-called fruit inspectors. You know, if you're climbing a tree and you want to get to the top the quickest, what do you do? You go right up the trunk, right? But if you want any fruit, what do you have to do? You have to go out on a limb because there ain't no fruit on the trunk of a tree. So... So part of, part of, of this, this thing that happens, this relationship between parishioner and pastor is that we don't block what comes from him. More can come to him. The more accepting we are, the more prepared he will be, not because he opened a book and studied, he started to show himself approved yes. unto God. Yes. And God said, let me show you my approval when you stand up. Because I'll bless all those people out in front of you. But Paul said, 
pray that your pastor will have utterance. Mm -hmm. So we have a responsibility. Just like that and was in that verse, the responsibilities had been dropped. And God in his mercy and love said, I'm going to give you pastors. And guess what? When he came over to the New Testament, he says, uh-uh, it ain't on you anymore. Because what am I going to do is what? I'm going to make a provision, a simple provision. I'm going to give you the satisfaction of every sin being wiped out, and I'm going to put you in a protected place called Jesus. Yes, Will you accept him? Yes, sir. If you'll accept him as your personal savior, I will put you inside of him, and when Satan comes to you, you keep pointing to Jesus. Say, if you keep looking at Jesus, you're going to become more like him than if you keep looking at yourself, because in yourself isn't the thing that you need. I wouldn't have to give you a gift if you could do it. So you can't do it. I gave you the gift, accept the gift, and accept who you are in the gift. Because in the gift is what? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So therefore, if I spend my time working on me with, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why am I acting like I'm not? But God says, your acting doesn't change my decision. See, because we're never in charge. What it says back here, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? You can't understand your own way. But you can accept God's way and he will give you understanding that will enable you to help somebody else at an intersection in your life. I got the second chance, praise the Lord. At, at Kentucky Avenue, first chance I flunked. I didn't give a man a dollar. But another guy came by the next week and God was merciful. But in the process of handing him the money, the man spoke a couple of negative things about the church and how people receive. And I, I said, you know, what we have to understand is that everybody has opportunities to allow God to lead them over a cliff. And sometimes we don't understand that the cliff really isn't that deep. Just because we can't see it. I said, so don't blame people because they want to protect themselves. This world is a terrible place. So we don't have heaven here. I said, so what we have to do is make allowances for people who turn away from you, won't even look at you because you need something. I said, they're hurting too. We're all hurting at different levels. So all of a sudden, he just broke down. He grabbed me and gave me a hug. It's because I said, I'm not going to try to lift myself out of the group. I just flunked last week. How am I going to, how am I going to be the graduate this week? No, no. I'm still in school, too. So. Once we are willing to understand that the gifts are absolutely necessary, God has given us the perfect gift in Jesus Christ. He's given our church the perfect gift in Pastor Bay and Sister Karen Bay. Because, you know, I, I honestly believe that God calls both to the ministry. Because he said the husband and wife are one. They are one. If we don't try to split them up, you know, you know. If I had time, I could really meddle. But, I, um, but I'm going to just try and and get us to understand accepting the pastor, accepting the pastor allows God to do all He wants to do in your church. 
He can fill this church up in no time flat. You be in here looking. Saying, oh, I'm sorry. We, wait, you're number 500, and look, at 400, we had to shut it off. Next time, try to get here early. You know. But the difference is, is what? If we don't, if we're not even treating what we have, we're not even valuing what we have. You know, really, God has good sense. See, so you're not even a, appreciative of what you have. Why should I give you more to destroy? Uh, I'm going to close it up. Uh, praise the Lord. The, the thing that we are getting ready to do in a little while, communion. You know, we do that once a month in the church as a group. But you could do this every day at home if you wanted to. You think Jesus would turn you down if you want to spend a little time with him? No. What's important about this is that we come together in a group to acknowledge God's gift. God gave us Jesus to pay our sin debt because there was no way we could work it up. You can't work it up because the wages of sin is death. You can't die, <laughs> you know, and pay your debt <laughs> unsaved. You can't do it. So God did it for us. Great gift. We thank him for it. We praise him for it. We have to remember to do this in each other. No, I won't always be lovely. No, you won't always be lovely. But we can always love. Because God has shed abroad his love in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. He's given us a piece of himself to make sure that we have all we need in order to get from earth to heaven. That's that I. That's that I that we were singing about. So praise God. We thank God for our pastor. I'm going to just close this with a prayer. And uh, I think this prayer will deliver the rest of it that I have. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you that as I prepare myself for this sermon, many facts, many things, many sermons was preached during the week. But I thank you that however disjointed or whatever it is that I deliver, I always trust you to get the work done. My responsibility is to stand up and say what I can at the time. I thank you that I've had opportunity to listen to some of the sermons that I've preached before and not recognize the preacher. I thank you that you have been faithful to the first promise I received from you from walking into the first sermon. I will perfect that which concerns you. I thank you that you led me to understand that that was just, not just for when I walked into the pulpit or into a teaching position, but it was for everything. And in all those years, because it came at a time of preaching, I limited it to the preaching time. But I thank you that you didn't come up short. And when I was able to hear, you spoke to me again. Lord, speak to us again that we would clearly understand the love you have for us that we would be able to freely share the love because you don't run out of love. And the more love we give, 
the more capacity we will have to give. I believe I've asked for something good. I believe that your word says no good thing will you withhold from them who walk up right before you. Therefore, I thank you that you have blessed us that right now on the inside of us we hear you. We bless your name. We bless your gift. We thank you for Pastor Bay. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for a better understanding that we can come and receive just one verse from you that can carry us all the way from earth to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open for salvation. Is anyone here who doesn't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins? Doesn't know that God's love has taken care of every situation in your life, that he's not holding one thing against you. All he's saying is this, you can come and receive salvation right now because Jesus has paid the price. You can come down this aisle. If you don't know the Lord, you can give your hand to one of the deacons and you can receive that salvation and be assured that God will perfect everything that concerns you. Is there one? Praise the Lord. I'm looking around. I see all mostly familiar faces. Frankly, they're all familiar. Is this a saved house or what? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can take a seat. Precious and gracious Father, we thank you, Lord God, for being able to give back into your kingdom what you have given to us. We honor that, God, the tithe and offering. We ask you, Lord, let us continue to bless this part of Zion as we keep the doors open for the saints, not only the saints, the ones on the outside of the door, Lord God. So we ask you now to strengthen us, Lord God, in numbers. Not only that, Lord God, but allow us not only to give out the pipe, but give out our hearts. Because you have gave us love and that conquers all things. And we thank you right now, Lord, for being able to give. In Jesus' holy name we praise thee. Amen. Amen.
blood that gives me strength from day
One day when I was lost He died on the cross And I know it was a blood